Welcome to Chapter 18, The International Typographic Style. During the 1950s, a design movement emerged from Switzerland to Germany that has been called Swiss Design or the International Typographic Style. It was a major force in design for over 20 years. Now, this design style had both critics and it had designers who were for it. So there are pros and cons. On the con side, critics complained that it was based on formula and always resulted in the same solution, while those who advocated using the style said that its purity has given the designer the means to achieve a perfection of form. The innovators of this movement truly felt that design was a socially useful and important activity. Personal expression was set aside in favor of a scientific and universal approach to design problems. Visual unity of design was achieved by asymmetrical organization of the design elements on a mathematically constructed grid. Sans serif type is used in a flush left, ragged right alignment and visual elements were clear and factual. You as the artist were an important means of spreading information. Presenting ideas with clarity and order was of paramount importance. Now, you need to know these characteristics and answer this question. Why did these designers use a grid and sans serif type specifically? I also want you to tell me what modern art movements or school can be identified as the roots of the international typographic style. The attitude developed by this movement's early practitioners about their profession is more important than the visual appearance of the work itself. So let's look at a couple pioneers of this movement. Ernst Keller was a pioneer of the movement. He was an instructor at the Zurich School of Applied Art and was an early force behind the international typographic style. He established standards of excellence over four decades. He felt that solution to a design problem should come from the content. As a result, his work had diverse solutions. For example, this poster for the Reitberg Museum shows his interest in symbolism, geometric form, and vibrant color. Another pioneer of the movement was Swiss artist Theo Balmer. He was trained at the Bauhaus, and he also became one of the links between early constructivist design and the new movements that formed after World War II. Balmer's poster designs achieved a high formal harmony as he used a grid to make visual forms. In this burrow poster, both the word and its reflection are carefully developed on a grid. The grid is invisible in this poster, but in the norm poster, you can clearly see the grid. As another pioneer of the movement, Max Bill was a painter, architect, engineer, product designer, and sculptor. He was also a student of the Bauhaus. In this book cover from 1942, he demonstrates mathematical precision by aligning the type down the center of the page, creating harmony and order in an asymmetrical layout. And in this American Architecture exhibition poster, he demonstrates his strategy of designing mathematical structure to contain the elements. The elements are the squares with the pictures in them. He developed principles of visual organization that included the linear division of space into harmonious parts, modular grids, geometric progression, and sequences. Talking about functional graphics for science, we have to start with Anton Stanikowski. He was a graphic designer, and he was innovative in photography, photomontage, and darkroom image manipulation. He experimented with close-up photographs of common objects whose texture and detail were transformed into abstract images. In this first image for a calendar for Standard Electric, the lines move in a radio pattern signifying transmission and radiation using the client's radio and telephone products. This second image is a trademark for Standard Electric. The lines stand for communication, transmission, and reception. I want you to notice the asymmetrical balance on both images. So, do a little bit more digging and tell me what was his major contribution to graphic design. Several new sans serif type families were designed in the 1950s. Adrian Frutiger completed a visually programmed family of 21 sans serif fonts called Universe. He worked for over th three years on this type. In the end, over 35,000 matrices were created to produce all 21 fonts in the full range of sizes. 
This took an astounding 200,000 hours of machine engraving, retouching, and final hand punching to create. I want you to tell me what is the important characteristic of universe. Helvetica came about as Edward Hoffman of the House Foundry in Switzerland, basically upgraded fonts designed in the 19th century. Its well-defined forms and rhythm of positive and negative shapes made it one of the most specified typefaces used internationally during the 60s and 70s. I want you to be able to tell me, after a little bit more research, what are the differences between the universe and Helvetica fonts. Hermann Zaff was another typeface designer from Germany. He combined a love and understanding of traditional topography with a 20th century attitude towards space and scale as demonstrated by these typefaces on the left. His major contribution to his craft were two editions of the Manual Typographium published in 1954 and 1968. In this page on the left, you see a quote about the power of the printed word to govern time and space, and this inspired this graphic field of tension radiating from a central cluster. In this next page, you see classical symmetry and exquisite intervals between the letters. In Basel and Zurich, Switzerland, more typographic development occurred. Topographer and graphic designer Emil Ruder joined the faculty of the Basel School of Design as a topography teacher. He taught his students to develop a sensitivity to the negative or unprinted spaces including inside and around the letter forms. Ruder and his students exhaustively explored design possibilities using the universe typeface. His Topography, a Manual of Design, done in 1967, is one of the most important treatises on the international style, and his design for the text reflects his beliefs. On the right here, we see a page spread from Topography, a Manual of Design, where it illustrates the differences between the written and printed letter form. I want you to tell me what was the main point he stressed in his teachings. Swiss design began to coalesce into a unified international movement when the journal New Graphic Design began publication in 1959. This trilingual journal presented the philosophy and accomplishments of the Swiss movement to an international audience. Josef Miller Brockman was a leader in the theory of the movement. His messages are as current today as they were then. This poster for the American Books Today catalog shows a very clear message using shapes to signify books and colors used to signify the country of their origin. I want you to do a little research and tell me what were his goals for good graphic communication. His photographic posters treat the image as an objective symbol that gain impact through scale and camera angle. In the first poster here for the Swiss Auto Cub, photography amplifies the text, the friendly hand sign protects from accidents. And in this other poster, which is a public awareness poster, the type, which is red, declares less noise while the photograph shows the discomfort of noise. During the 1960s, he created a series of over 350 book covers for McGraw-Hill Publishers. I want you to tell me, how did he redefine the nature of book jacket design in the United States through his designs for McGraw-Hill Publishers? The ITS was embraced by corporate and institutional graphics during the 1960s. MIT established a graphic design program. This program let all members of the university community have free professional design assistance on their publications and publicity material. This design service office produced publications and posters like these two here. Looking at these posters, can you tell me what was a common design element used in the MIT program? In the first poster on the left, a repetition of letter forms establishes almost a musical sequence and animates the space. And on the poster on the right, stencil letter forms announce the open house and the open O does double duty as a concrete symbol of the opening of the campus to visitors. So in conclusion, the design movement that began in Switzerland and Germany became international. A growing awareness of design as a logical tool for large organizations after World War II caused a growth in design and visual identification systems.